Hello everyone, welcome again to my channel and welcome to the backtracking series of videos. So all the combination sums videos are over now. So today we will start with permutations and the first problem is permutation 1 that is 46. So the problem statement is saying given an array nums of distinct integers return all the possible permutations. You can return the answer in any order. So here you will be given with one array of distinct numbers say 1 2 3 then the output will be all the combinations or sorry permutations possible here. So 1 2 3 then 1 3 2 2 1 3 2 3 1 3 1 2 and 3 2 1. So these are the number of possible permutations possible if the numbers array is like this. For 0 1 two possibilities there one is 0 1 and one other one is 1 and 0. So if you think about uh, instead of numbers array you are given with one word which constrain the distinct characters suppose say dog or god. So uh, in that case permutations means all the possible words with the same number of characters and counts right and actually what they called they called as anagrams right. So you can think it as an anagram problem also suppose dog or god is given to you you have to find all the possible anagrams. So how to solve this problem? Now we will see. So the array is given to us as 1, 2, 3 and it is guaranteed that all the characters will be unique and these are the possible combinations we will get as output. Okay. Now uh, if we have to think from ourselves, not in a computer or programming manner how we will think like how we can create all these combinations. So one thing is we have to follow the choices. So first time if you check what will be the first digit? So here if you see right with one two number started with two two number started with three three permutation started. So initially our choice will be either one or say two or three. Any one of them we can choose. Let's say we choose the first character as one means that position is fixed. Then what are the choice left for us? One is two and another choice is three. Okay, perfect. Now among these choices, let's say one and two is fixed. Now from this onward, what are the choice left? Only three because one and two is already used. In this case, what will happen? Only choice as two is left. Fine. Now this part is done. So by starting with one, I can get two combination. One is one, two, three, and another is one, three, two. So now we have to jump to two. Like first fix the position of two. Then what will be the choice for us? One is one, and another one is three. Now same case from one after fixing two and one. What are the choice left? that is 3 and from 2 3 what are the choice left that is 1 fine. So in similar case from here we have choice as to use uh, either 1 or 2 and from 1 we have choice as to use only 2 and from 2 it is has 1. So now if you follow all the paths you can get all the combinations total six combinations right. So this is the way if we draw the decision tree we can get all the possible permutations. If we have bigger numbers like one two three four then we will get more and more branches from one point right. So what from the programming point we are doing is we are doing a backtracking kind of thing. How it is that I will explain. So if you check now first suppose first we have to start our decision from here and we decided to go with one first. Later on we will do for two and three also but initially we started with one. Then what we did is we had choice of two and three but I started with Okay, fine. Then we have only choice as three. So we completed it and this result we collected somewhere. One, two, three. Done. Now 
from three nowhere we can go because no choices are left so we have to go back to two this junction point and we have to check that from two is there any other choices left or not in this case it is not there so we have to again go back so this going back is basically backtracking okay now from one we are checking if there are any choices are present or not yes we have another choice we can make that is three so now we can grow one tree or path using one and three fixed so from three only we have one choice as two and that is done then we have to go back to here then here and then here okay like the starting point like from where we started thinking then from there how many choices we can go two two is the first choice we can make after one and then we can go to one then three and similar way we can come back and go for two and three and one and we can go back to here and we can go to our last choice and do the same thing so this is the way if you think it is in a dfs manner or depth first search manner we are first going and we are achieving our goal and then we are coming back so what is the base condition here to achieve our goal is obviously the length of this array and our path length should be same then only we can collect one uh, permutation as a result right now we will do the coding for it and the tree we will compare side by side then you will get a good experience also like how to code this kind of problem okay now we will see the coding so i have wrote this code side by side with the tree so this is our total decision tree so what we did here is so first of all we had options to choose between one two three but initially we went with one and later on we will visit two and three how these things we will derive in programming let's say if you can see here i have two methods one is this one and one is this one this one is the main method which is given in the lit code okay that is permute which will give you one numbers array and it wants a list of list of integer as a return type okay so first i defined it the result list and then i am calling a helper method okay so that is the recursive call which i will make over this method and i named it as dfs okay what i have to pass there is the nums array the result array and a new array list why this new array list is required because whenever i will traverse one path i have to keep all the values in that path so for that purpose i need one list right that we will keep on growing so for we first when we started i passed one freshly created list now when i came to here first time what you have to do is you have to check for one to three like from i equal to zero to the nums length i have to check for every combination so what i am doing is whenever i got the first letter that is one in this case that i put in a list okay and this condition will not come in the first time because we are doing it for first time right so what i did is in the path i added one okay and then we are calling the function again okay this is the recursion call so here if you see one condition is there that is called the base case what is our base case means when the recursion will stop when the list size and the numbers of length that will be same that means we collected three element that means we have to stop that time and we have to collect it in the big thing that is the result result dot add new array list li maybe question can come into our mind like why you did a new array list because uh, you know like java is passed by reference so if we pass li directly so that reference will be here and it will keep on growing so we have to destroy the reference that's why i have created a new array list here okay and that is the base condition so we have to return from there 
until and unless we reach the base condition we have to keep on digging deep in a dfs call right so if you look at here what this code is doing is first it choose one then it went to the depth again in dfs and then it is searching like where i can apply this so again it has choice of using one two and three but as this condition is saying if li dot contains namai then continue that means I had choice of using one, two, and three, but as the path already contain one, so I have to start from two and three. Okay, means my choice reduced to one in the next level. Okay, then in the next level again, my choice reduced to one from two, and I can only think about three. And that time the list contains one, two, and three, so it will be collected in this step. Okay and it will be returned from there so after returning from this call our first job is to remove the last element from the list because we are going to explore the new path from here okay so our path was the list was containing one then two then three so after the last dfs call what we have to do is we have to remove the last element then here we have no path so we have to remove this as well then here we have no path so sorry here from here we have another path so we have to add three here and then gradually we have to add two here and similarly we have to remove two remove three remove one and we have to add two here then I have to add one here, then I have to add three here. Okay. So this is the way we have to complete the problem. Okay. So if you look at now in this DFS call, one thing is there that is the base condition. So this is called as the base condition, like when to collect the result. And these are all just helping to loop through that. Like every layer it is trying to give the choices if you already use the number it is not doing anything it is continuing or else it is collecting the number and again going to the deeper level to do a dfs call okay and while coming back or while doing a backtracking that time it is just removing that element from there so this is all about the coding so if we submit this solution it is working thanks for watching